In this video, we're going to look at a couple of examples on deferred swaps. You'll see what I mean by deferred swaps uh, as we get into the example. So let's let's get started. Uh, this, this first example, you're given this uh, uh, term structure of interest rates, these spot rates, uh, one-year spot rate 1%, two-year spot rate 2%, and so forth. And the question is, determine the swap rate for a two-year deferred two-year interest rate swap. So let's kind of talk about what a two-year deferred two-year interest rate swap is. So let's look at a timeline. Uh, so I'm starting the timeline at time zero, and it's a two-year deferred, so I'm not going to do anything for two years, and then it's a two-year interest rate swap. So uh, don't do anything for two years, and then start swapping after that for the next two years. So my first swap will occur uh, for an interest payment between time two and time three, and the interest payment from time two to time three uh, will be based off of the forward rate from time two to time three. Uh, by the way, in the problem, they didn't tell me what the notional amount is, so I I'm a, don't read more into the problem than, there, than it's there. Just assume there's a level notional amount. And so if there's a level, uh, because I don't, I don't know anything else, uh, anything else to assume, so assume it's a level notional amount. So the amount of the interest payment at time three would be the notional amount times the forward rate from time two to time three. Uh, so that, that's going to be my payment at, that I'm going to be swapping at, at time three. And then uh, it's a two-year swap, so i got one more year. So from time three to time four, the uh, amount of the payment from time, the interest payment at time four will be the notional amount times the forward rate from time three to time four. So those are the, the payments that I'm going to be swapping. Those are based off of these uh, forward rates that are not going to be equal to each other, and I want to swap those for interest payments that are going to be based off of a level or a fixed interest rate of I, so a, a cap N times I. Now, w one thing that I recognize is that I have level notional amounts, and I, I know from a previous video that when I have level notional amounts, the swap rate will not depend on what that level notional amount is. So that's why they didn't say anything in the problem about what the notional amount was. Uh, when I solve for I in my equation, I won't depend on what the notional amount is, so I may as well uh, just take it out. Assume it's a notional amount of one, for instance, and, and just take it out. And so now, how does the swap occur? Well, it occurs in a fair way, the fair way being that I take the present value of the two sets of payments and I set them equal to each other. So the present value of the, of the forward payment, of the pay, payments based off the forward rate at time three and at time four, I need to take the forward rate at time three, discount that back to time zero, and the forward rate at time four, and discount that back to time zero. And I would do that by multiplying by the appropriate V factors that I have shown. And then I set that equal to the present value of the payments uh, at time three of I and at time four of I. And then I factor out an I and uh, divide by the rest. And that's what my swap rate would be equal to for this deferred swap. So that's what the deferred swap rate is equal to. At this point, because I have all of the forward, uh, all of the spot rates listed, you could actually calculate then what the forward rates are going to be numerically. Calculate what the forward rates are going to be, and and just go through the the computation. But again, I mentioned this earlier. I'll mention it again that if you'll take a moment to do a symbolic computation, you can you can simplify what the numeric computation is going to be later on. So look at the numerator, and in the numerator, I'm going to put in some. Uh, uh, you know, some brackets just to, for emphasis. I want to put brackets around each term in the numerator, and I recognize that each one of those terms in the numerator is a forward rate times its appropriate V value or appropriate discount factor. And I could, uh, I remember then from a previous video that the forward rate times the discount factor is going to be the difference between the two corresponding discount factors. So, for instance, that first set of brackets that f sub 2 3 times v cubed is a v sub 2 squared minus a v sub 3 cubed and the second uh, in the second brackets I just get a v sub 3 cubed minus a v sub 4 to the fourth uh, I, again that was in uh, the learning video on um, uh, when we talked about level notional swaps this was in the learning video and so the the numerator will actually simplify because the v sub 3 cubes just add out in the numerator and so I end up with this swap rate being this different the the difference between these v values in the numerator divided by the sum of these other v values in the denominator and uh, at this point again and so I, uh, again let me make this observation I just took one extra step recognizing my formula, this, this, this very useful formula that I have, that this cap F times the, times the V reduces to a difference in 
in corresponding V values, and then I get a telescoping sum, and I've, I'm able to reduce the uh, 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 the expression, uh, uh, reduce the expression to a more simple expression, especially when it comes to numerically calculating the value of that expression. And so now I just plug in the values for the V sub twos and the V sub threes and the V sub fours. And, and I got it, uh, you know, I just now just numerically go through the computation and I got, uh, I got a 6.009% number uh, for that swap rate. So that's the swap rate for this two year deferred two year interest rate swap. Okay, so now this swap was, uh, this example was based off of, they didn't tell me anything about the notional amount, so I just assumed it, it was a, a level notional amount. Let's look at a second example, same setup, but the last sentence is determine the swap rate for a two-year deferred two-year interest rate swap where the notional amount for year three is 100,000 and the notional amount for year four is 200,000. So now the notional amounts are not equal to each other. I have to keep them in the problem then. I have to keep the notional amounts as part of my uh, expression when, when, uh, when I'm trying to, to uh, 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 determine the swap rate. Let me, uh, before I go on to the solution, let me mention some terminology here. If the notional amounts are increasing over time, the swap is called an accreting swap. Accreting means that, that, uh, uh, that it's, it's kind of growing. So the notional amounts are increasing over time, the swap is called an accreting swap. Uh, on the other hand, if the notional amounts were decreasing over time, the swap would be an amortizing swap. Remember, amortizing in the context of like paying off a loan, amortizing means you're paying the loan down, Things, the balances are going down. So if the notional amounts are decreasing, it's called an amortizing swap. Uh, so in this case, I have notional amounts of 100,000 for year three. Now, be a little bit careful. For year three, the notional amount is 100,000. That means, well, year three, year three goes from time two to time three. The interest payment is at time three, but the notional amount would be at time two. So when it says the notional amount for year three is 100,000, that's the notional amount at time two is 100,000, and the notional amount likewise at time three is 200,000 for that fourth year. Okay, I see that that notional amount is increasing, so I got an accreting swap here. All right, so let's go back to the timeline, and what I'm going to choose to do in the timeline is keep is to do this problem symbolically first without putting in the 100,000 and the 200,000. I'll come back in and put those values in later, but let, let me just keep it as, in, as notional amount at time two and notional amount at time three for the moment. So this is the, uh, this is the payments that are based off of the, of the forward rates that are not equal to each other, and I want to replace those with interest payments that are based off of a fixed interest rate I, and so I'd get, uh, I'm going to be swapping for, for, these, for these payments. Again, how do you do it? You do it in a fair way by taking the present value of the two payments, sets of payments, and equal, set them equal to each other. So the, the, uh, what I have shown is the present value. Uh, you know, I got to take the payment at time, payments at time three and discount back to time zero by multiplying by V sub three cubed. Payments at time four, discount back to time zero by multiplying by V sub four to the fourth. And that's what I get for uh, the expression, the last expression on your screen, or on, on the slide is the, um, is the present value of the payments based off of the uh, forward rates. And then uh, I set that equal to the pre present value of the payments based off the swap rate, I. And then I just solve for I. On the equation on the right hand side, or the expression on the right hand side, I uh, just factor out an I, divide by everything else, and that's what I get for, uh, for uh, the swap rate. At this point, you can start plugging in numeric values if you like. The, uh, the notional amounts are given, uh, the, 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 Vs, uh, the Vs are easy enough. Now the forward rates are gonna be a little bit uh, cumbersome or a little bit tedious to calculate. So again, I would suggest using uh, the same um, uh, uh, formula that we talked about before. Let me, let me for emphasis, put, these, uh, put, in bra put some brackets in the numerator just for emphasis. And what I'm going to see is that the uh, the cap F times the V's in the in the numerator I could write as a difference of the corresponding V. So the cap F sub two, uh, the forward rate from time two to three, discounted from time three to time zero, is going to be equal to the difference between uh, the the discount factor from time two back to time zero and the discount factor from time three back to time zero, and likewise in the other bracket. Okay, if I do that, that's going to make my calculations a lot easier, uh, even though it may not look at that way. The forward rates are, 
are tedious to calculate. You're going to get a bunch of decimal values that you're going to keep, tra keep track of. This is just an easier calculation to do, in my opinion. And so this is how I do the problems. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug in numeric values for everything. Uh, for the uh, notional amounts, I got numeric values of 100 and 200,000, respectively. And then the, the V values are just based off of the corresponding uh, sp uh, spot rates. And so I'll just go through the calculation. Um, it's tedious, but I go through the calculation, and I get about a 6.351% number for, uh, for that uh, swap rate. Okay, uh, so at this point, let me make this, this comment. You're, uh, uh, at this point, as far as all the computational type of material for the FM exam, we just finished it. So congratulations. Uh, pat yourself on the back. Uh, we're done with all the computational type of, of problems. Uh, I have one more video that I'm going to uh, make that I'll put uh, next that will be a video on uh, some definitions of interest rates, some key interest rates and their definitions and how they're used, uh, but they're not really computational problems, uh, you know, from that, from that, from those topics. The, the problems are more, you know, true-false type problems or, or uh, you know, those, that sort of stuff. They're not really computational problems. Uh, so congratulations, though, you finished uh, the computational material, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's been a, a long course, but uh, if you'll if you'll master this material, I'm I'm sure that you'll uh, have a have a uh, positive result on the FM exam. So good luck to you, and I'll see you in the next final video.